Hello everyone and welcome to an amazing project that I have for you today. We are going to be building up this, let me call it a books application, which is going to be making use of the New York Times API in order to get the data about these books. And then it's going to use Tailwind CSS for the styling and Next.js is going to be on the front end. Now, this is not the first page of this application. The first page is going to be showing the book categories. So the one that we were just viewing is called hardcover fiction. But if I go back and I say I want to look at something else, something like sport and fitness, then I simply click on this category and it takes me into an inner page about that particular category. And then it shows me books concerning that category. So it's going to be a nice application if you're getting started with Next.js and you're having trouble with how the routing works and how fetching data in server components works. So we're going to be doing all that in this application and I hope you're ready. It's going to be a short series, probably going to be two or three parts at most. And yes, I do have the flu. So as with any Next.js project, we first need to create the Next.js application. So I've already done that just to speed up things on my side. But what I've done is I have navigated into my desktop and then into a folder that is called YT videos. And then I've run the command npx create next app. And then I've called it next book finder. That's why you can see that I am now in that particular folder. And then because I want to use Tailwind CSS, I've added the dash dash Tailwind flag as well as the dash dash es linked flag. And then you can simply run this command and then say yes to every prompt that you're going to get such as TypeScript and so on and so forth. But I don't want that to run, otherwise it's going to mess this up. So you simply say yes to every prompt such as, do you want to use TypeScript? We are not using TypeScript, so simply say no. And then uh, I've just realized that that is some contradictory statement. Simply say yes to the default prompts that you're going to get. Don't change anything on the default, default prompts so that you can run your application as I have mine inside here. And then once it finishes, you can simply say npm run dev, which is going to open up our application on localhost 3000, and then we can begin. And so if we navigate to localhost 3000 in our browser, this is what we are met with as our first page. So what I want to do first of all is I want to go ahead and clear out my app folder and then my page.js so i want to clear all of this out because i don't want the default template here so i'm just going to say rfc which is going to generate a react functional component for me if it does today if it doesn't i can just type it out okay there we go so page and then i'm going to rename this to home so that when i save that then we're only going to see home on the screen right there now in our globals.css i'm not going to change anything because I actually want to use the black background here. So the CSS here is going to remain as it is, and we are not even going to touch anything inside here. So you can simply close that out. And because we're using Tailwind, I want to show you a very interesting package that Tailwind has with Prettier. So it allows us to format Tailwind classes in the form that goes along with BEM, which is a styling convention for CSS. So if you go into GitHub, I can't remember the link, but I'm going to link it in the description. So this is the link right here. And the package is called Prettier Plugin Tailwind CSS. So the way we install it is right here. So npm install minus D Prettier and then Prettier Plugin Tailwind CSS. So just copy this link and then add a new terminal here. And then you can paste it in. And then as that installs, we need to create a prettier.rc file inside our workspace. So copy this once again, and then make sure that you're in your workspace and then right click and say new file. And then it's called dot prettier RC. And then simply paste this in and then remember to remove this comment, otherwise you're going to get an error. So save that. And then once this finishes installing, what it is going to do is if I go ahead and add some tailing classes here, such as text white, and then font bold, and then margin bottom 20, and then text center, something like that. Now it has finished installing. So what should happen here is that these classes should now be formatted in the correct way. So when I save this, look at what happens. 
okay okay there we go it just took a while to load so you can see that now margin bottom is added first then text center then font pole then text white so that is the plugin that we're going to be using in this project it's just going to help us to structure our tailwind css much better our styling much better so inside here i don't want the home obviously inside here we're going to have a div which is not going to have these classes actually it's going to have classes as follows it's going to have a padding on the x axis of 6 a padding on the y of 20 and then it's going to have a container max width and then an mx of auto and then inside here i'm going to have an h1 that says categories categories but we're going to substitute this with some actual text once we get the data from the api so save that and then let's see what you have on the screen you can close that we have categories so let's center this text so class name text center so text dash center margin bottom of eight font bold and text white but actually not we don't really need text white because it is already added in our global css so we don't need to add text right there and there we go so text we need to increase it so text dash for xl to increase it there we go now let's go ahead and jump inside the new york times api so then nytimes.com so newyorktimes.com and then if you go here then it should be i can't remember let me see nytimes api there we go so the the link is developer.nytimes.com so that is the link you can simply click on this to open it up and then of course if you don't have an account then you simply need to go ahead and create an account with them and as you can see it has already logged me in so what we need to do here is i need to go ahead and create an application so if i click on apps here then you'll see that i have a bunch of apps but the latest one is this one which i created called nyt hardcore fiction and then the description is a list of best-selling hardcore fiction books and you can see the others that we have done before i think i recorded these ones and i published it on youtube as well but if you're completely new to this api what you can do is create a new app so simply go ahead and say plus new app and then give your app a name here and then give it a description of course not what i'm typing inside here but you get the gist and then once you do that we're going to be using the books api right here so make sure that once you create once you give your app name and description go ahead and enable the books api and then once you enable it you can click on save now you can see that the new york times has a bunch more apis but in this case we're only using the books api but i challenge you to go ahead and try to create an application using these other apis it's going to be quite interesting i assure you so once you enable the books api click on save and then once you click on save you can now go ahead and visit your apps and then you're going to have your application right there now what i'm going to be using is this one which i created on april 19th so if i open this you will see that i now have access to my api key right here and don't worry about this i'm showing this one for the video but i'm going to create a new one i'm going to revoke this one so that i don't uh, you know get issues let me just say it like that so this is the api key that i'm going to be using and once you create your own application you're going to be issued with your own api key so what i'm going to do is copy this api key and then back inside our application i'm going to create a new file in our workspace called dot env dot local and then inside here i'm going to say next underscore public public underscore api underscore key and then set this equal to the api key that i copied so i'm going to save that and this is going to be very useful because we're going to be fetching our data using this api key now if i go back into our dashboard and i go into apis then you'll see that we have access to the books api right here so if i open this up we're going to be taken into the documentation and for our first page this is the endpoint that we're going to be hitting in order to get all the categories of books so let me go ahead and find the call right here so it should be this one let me see let me see i can't remember what i was using even so let's go ahead and do this 
let me just go ahead and open this in a new tab and then i'm going to go ahead and su substitute this part right here with sorry wait a minute it should be let's see list forward slash names to json so knee lists forward slash names dot json and then for our api key i'm just going to place this in like so and then we should get the list there we go so this is the endpoint that we're going to be hitting and in the next video we're going to begin with this so let me go ahead and copy this link and then now let's go back into our page.js and then because we are using react server components this is what we're going to do i'm going to say async function get book categories or you can call it get categories depending on how you want it so get book categories and then inside here i'm going to say const res is equal to await fetch and then i'm going to go ahead and place in my backticks and then paste in the link that i copied now inside here i want to substitute my api key because i don't want to set my api key inside here so the way i'm going to do it is i'm going to go ahead and call process dot env dot next underscore public underscore api underscore key which is the name that i gave in my env local file so this part is going to go ahead and access the api key from my env local and you can see that it is grayed out that means that it is inside the git ignore somewhere uh, right here and that means that it is not going to be committed to github so people are not going to have access to this so once we do that we want to go ahead and say if res or oh sorry if there is no response if it is not okay then we just go ahead and say console dot error uh you know let me not do that let's say throw new error so throw new error and then say failed to fetch books categories like so and then right on the bottom of this let's just go ahead and say return res dot json like so and then what we can do is inside server components we can transform this entire thing into an asynchronous component so that inside here i can go ahead and say const books is equal to await get book categories like so now let me go ahead and just go ahead and console log the books just to make sure that we're getting something and then because this is a server component if i save this then the console log should now appear inside here there we go so you can see let me zoom out a bit you can see that now the console log is appearing inside here meaning that our get request is running okay so now what we need to do is the following if i go ahead and remove the books what i'm going to do is below the h1 i'm going to create a div a div and then inside this div i'm going to map over my data so i'm going to say books dot map and let me just check something it needs to be books dot results let me zoom in this as well so it needs to be books dot results because now results is the array of objects that contains the data about the categories so it needs to be books dot results and then dot map and then for every book or let me call it category so to go re and you know what i should have called this categories so categories is equal to yeah that is a much better naming so categories dot results dot map and then for every category i want to go ahead and return an article and then inside this article i'm going to go ahead and give it a key of let's see the list name or the display name or the list name encoded should all be unique for all of them so i'm going to use the list name encoded for our unique key so i'm going to say category dot list underscore name underscore encoded coded like so and then inside here i'm going to return an h2 that says category dot what dot display name so dot display underscore name and then below this h2 i'm going to turn a paragraph that says let's see the oldest published date so for this one as going to, i'm going to say first published so when it was first published 
and this is going to say category dot oldest underscore published underscore date okay and then below this paragraph just copy this down and then change this to newest published list so newest underscore published list published date i don't know why i'm saying this <laughs> and then this should be last published because it was last published on this date and it was first published on the oldest date and then once we have that then let's see we need to have updated so once again add another paragraph and then say updated and then i'm going to say category dot dated and then save that and then now if we take a look at our application there we go so we have all those categories just looking so bland like this so let's go ahead and style it out so i'm going to say this inside this div which is the parent i'm going to give this a class name of grid and a gap of four and then for medium screens i'm going to say grid columns two and then for large screens i'm going to say grid columns three and then inside this article i'm going to give it a class name here of padding or round of four and then give it a border and then a border dash neutral dash 800 and then rounded dash large let's save that let's see what we have there we go looking nice already and then on hover i want the bg to be neutral neutral dash 900 so that we have that on hover and then let's have a slight transition like so and then on the h2 give it a class name and i'm going to say text xl and then font bold margin bottom of four and let's see save that okay that's probably too big i think i used text large in the demo and then for the paragraphs so click here and then hold down the alt key and then click the next paragraph and the next one to add multiple cursors give this a class name of text neutral dash 400 and text dash small save that and we're going to have that and then for this middle paragraph i'm going to say margin y of two to separate it from the top and bottom one like so and would you look at that we already have our first page working but let's change the title first of all so for our title we're going to do this right inside the h1 i'm simply going to go ahead and get the length of the categories array using the dot length method so i'm going to say categories categories dot results because we know that results is the array dot length and then i'm going to say categories when i save that we should see 59 categories or 59 categories and there we go so there is our home page already complete would you look at that would you look at that so in the next video we are going to begin to make our dynamic route so that we can go into the internal pages so for this video i want to go ahead and create the internal routes for each of these books so what i'm going to do is this we first of all need to transfer this or transform it rather into a link instead of an article so i'm going to link this and then the href should go into something and remember that we need to get the dynamic route for each of these links so we also need to create the dynamic route for it first of all so what i'm going to do is this inside my app folder the way the routing works in next.js is that every folder inside the app automatically becomes a route so i'm going to create a new folder inside here called books and when i do that and i add in a new file here called page.js and then i just say rfc and then change this into books if i go ahead and save that you'll notice that i can now navigate into forward slash books and it now just shows the books but the problem with that is that this link is not dynamic in that if i try to navigate to a page like this or a category like this it is not going to show me that particular category so next yes provides a solution for us by doing the following instead of having the pages here i'm just going to delete it inside this books i'm going to create a new folder and then in square brackets i'm going to call it books like so so the same name and then inside here i'm going to create a new file called page.js 
Now, if I go ahead and say RFC inside here, and then change this into books, then what you'll notice is I can still navigate into forward slash books. And we should still see something on the screen. Uh, but nothing happens because now this is a 404 page. The reason why it's a 404 page is because the books, which is the original parent, does not have a page.js. But now the way this routing is being interpreted is as follows. We have the home page and then we have the forward slash books and then another forward slash which is going into a dynamic route. So now this is a dynamic route. Now look at this. If I go ahead and add, so obviously it filled it up for me. So if I just go ahead and navigate to that, then we should now see books right there. Meaning, if I go ahead and also navigate into a random route just like that, then I should still see books because now that is the route that we are creating inside here. Now, the interesting thing with Next.js is this. If I can go ahead and destructure params from inside here, and then if I console log params, what we should see in our console is when I save that, look at that. We have books which is our dynamic route. And then it's saying from the parameters that it is getting, it is getting this, which is the random stuff that I typed inside here. Now look at this. If I go ahead and type in some other random stuff and I navigate to it, then look at what is logged in the console as well. The very, very same thing. Now what that means is as follows. If I go back inside my page.js inside here, I can make this into a dynamic route by adding in my curly brackets and then my back ticks and then my dollar sign curly brackets once again. And then I can go ahead and say this, that this is going into the forward slash books, which is this route inside here, and then forward slash and then the dynamic route. So I'm going to say category, category dot. Now, this is going to be coming from the API. The way we can search for a single book in the API is by using its list name encoded. Because look at this, let me just go ahead and let me see if I can find it. Right here, we have hardcover dash fiction. If I go ahead and search for hardcover fiction, it is right here. And then it is inside the list name encoded. So we search for the list name encoded and then append dot JSON to the end of it so that we can get books concerning that particular category. So this is the endpoint that we're going to be hitting in the API. That therefore means that we can do the following. If I jump back inside here, I can say category dot list underscore name underscore encoded. And then now when I save this, if I go back to our application and then go back and then go back and then go back again and then go back again, we are back in our homepage and it says link is not defined. Oops, control space bar and then hit enter, which is going to automatically import it for you. Now, if I save that again, then this error should go away. And then when it does, now look at the bottom left, okay? When I hover over this, it now shows me the link that when I click, it's going to navigate to. So this one is navigated into combined print and ebook fiction. And then this one is the same and then this one and then this one see that meaning now if i go ahead and click on hardcover fiction it navigates into forward slash books oops it navigates into forward slash books forward slash hardcover fiction if i go ahead into another category such as this one then look at this it goes into that particular category now look at what happens in the console i navigated to this one first and then to this one and it is also logged because we are logging it to the console right here. Well, that means therefore that I can go ahead and get the API, the API endpoint, sorry, which should be this one right here. So let me copy that and then paste it here so that I don't forget. And then if I just go ahead and copy, let me copy this, copy that and then paste it inside here and then change this into get books. And then if I go ahead and now change this route from copy this, and then you can remove the console log. 
So I'm going to change this route from forward slash lists to forward slash this, so up to here. And then paste that in, remove this double forward slash. So now what should happen here is, this one is only searching for hardcover fiction. So I don't want that. So I'm going to substitute this and let it search for params dot, let me see, params dot books, because we want to get this. See how this is an object? So we can use dot notation to get the books. So params dot books. And then now let's see. So we need to call this function. So I'm going to say const books is equal to await get books. And see how we're getting an error here? It's because await cannot be used with a function that is not asynchronous. So we need to transform this into an asynchronous component like so, uh, or an asynchronous function. And then when I save that, then we should not get an error. So we still get books, fantastic. And then now look at this, we can now begin to build out our application. So inside here, I want to return a div with a class name of padding x of two and a padding y of 20. And then I'm going to say this should be a container. So container with an MX of auto. And then inside here, let's go ahead and say console log books so that we can see what we get back. So if I console log that, we get back a huge result. But let me just zoom out a bit. Let me zoom out so that I can show you that we, we should be getting, where is it? We are getting the object right here, but then results is also an object. And then now books is inside the result. So this is the one that we want. So what we need to do therefore is the following. Let me zoom back in. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and say inside this div, I'm going to create another div. And then I'm going to say books dot results so that we can go inside the results. And then the results object has books array inside. And then inside here, I can say dot map. And then for every book that I get back, like I can go ahead and render an article with the key of, let me just go ahead and let's see, can I open this in a new page, hardcover fiction, this one. Oops, invalid API key, let's just copy it from here paste it here and we should see the books. So there we go. So that we, we don't keep on zooming out in our console every time. So we are inside here. So dot books. And then we need to go ahead and say, I want to get the book image first of all. And then once I get the book image, I need to get the author, the title, the author and the description. So inside here, inside the key, I need to get the book dot. Let's see what can be used as a key inside here. The key inside here can be, can even be the book image because the book image is only linking to one particular book. But I think I'm going to use the description instead. So book dot description. And then once we have that, let's go ahead and render out our image. And the source for this image is going to be book dot book underscore image because I saw it right here, book underscore image. And then we're going to give this a width of, I can't remember what, what I used, but uh, anyway, there's no problem. I'm going to give it a width of, let's say 400 and a height of 600. And then a class name here is equal to width dash full so that it takes up the entire width of its container of the article and then object dash cover. And then when I save this, we're going to have an error on the screen, which is going to say something like da 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 is not defined. Okay, not this one. Let's just fix that error quickly. So it's going to say something like cannot fetch or something is not defined in our next config file. There you go. So it says this image cannot be found because da 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 is not configured in our next config file. So what we need to do is inside our next config.mjs, inside our next config here, we're going to say that we want to allow images with the remote patterns that are as follows. We're going to say that the host name is going to be, what was it? Storage, let me say, storage.googleapis.com, paste it inside here. And then we're going to allow a protocol here, protocol to HTTPS, like so. So when I save that, Next.js should automatically reload 
this so that we don't have to do it ourselves. And then when I take a look at this, then reload it so that it fixes everything. Reloading. Still reloading. Okay, there we go. So you can see that now we get our images. So that is looking quite ugly, but it's working, so it's okay. Now, once we have this, then let's go ahead and just tell this out. So inside this div, I'm going to give it a class name of grid and a gap of four. And then for medium screens, I'm going to say grid columns two. And then for large screens, I'm going to say grid columns three. So save that and it's going to say one, two, three. And you know what? I think I had four grids perhaps. So let me say that for extra large screens, then the grid columns are going to be four. So we have one, two, three, four. There we go. And then let's tell out the article. I'm going to give this a class name and I'm going to say border and border dash neutral dash 800 and then rounded dash large. And then on hover, I want the BG to be neutral dash 900. Save that and there we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the title of the images. And you'll notice that right on top, the images are not rounded. So let's fix that first of all. So I'm going to say that rounded dash top dash large for the images. And then below the image, I'm going to have an H2 that says book dot title, which should now render the title of the book right there. Let's go ahead and style it out. And then see how this, the title is to the edge. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to grab this H2, place it inside the div so that I can go inside this div and give it a class name of padding all round of four, which is going to push it inwards like so. And then on the H2, we're going to have a class name that says font bold. And then let's see font bold. I, I think it's just font bold. Yeah, I think it's just font bold. And then below the H2, but still inside the div, I'm going to have a paragraph that says book dot description. So book dot description. Save that and you should have the description right there. Let's style it out. Give it a class name. And I'm going to say text neutral dash 400 text small and leading six to increase the line height like so. Okay. Now for the H2 and the paragraph, I want to go inside the div and give it a class of space dash y dash four, which is going to separate out the elements inside by adding a margin on the top and bottom of the elements so that I don't have to add margins manually. And then let's see. Let's see, let's see, what else did I have in, in the demo? I can't remember, but that's okay. So we need the author. Yeah, we need the author. So below this, below the H2 actually, then we'll go ahead and say by, and then book.author. So, and we should now see the author right there. Let's style out this, give it a class name. And then I'm going to say text, text neutral, 400 text small like so and then once we do that i've just remembered that not all books have a description so for the ones that don't have a description let me try to see if i can go ahead and get that error let's see i think this one doesn't have descriptions okay so there are, there are some that don't have a descriptions but i thought it would give me an error saying that it doesn't have a description so i guess that this is okay but if you want to be on the safe side what you can do is you can go ahead and add a check and say that when book.description is true then you want to render the paragraph and if it falls then you just want to render null so that you can just add a bit of error boundary and so once we have that then let's go ahead and add the price now the prices that are in the api they all say that the price is zero zero but if you visit the links, then the prices are not set to zero. So I don't want to add the price because it might seem like, you know, like if you deploy this application and then someone visits, visits it and then sees the price to be zero and then wants to buy it, but then gets the price to be something different. I mean, I mean, it just comes off a little uh, untrustworthy, you know. So I, I don't want to add the price for this one. But what I'm going to do is 
I want to go ahead and add the buy links. So below this, uh, not below this div actually, still within this div, I'm going to create another div with an h3 that says buy now, buy now, and then below this h3, I'm going to have a ul, and then inside this ul, I'm going to say books, or was it book? It's book dot buy underscore links dot map. And then remember that buy links is also an array. That's why I'm using map. And then for every link that I get back, I also want to get back the index of the link. And then I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that the list item is going to be an anchor tag. And the href for this is going into link. That should be it link.url sorry and then the text is going to say link.name like so save that and then give this list item a key of index so that when i save that then we should be able to see there we go so buy now and then you can buy from all these five items right there so let's go ahead and style it out inside the h3 give it a class name of font dash semi bold I give it a margin bottom of two to separate it out from this part and then for the ul's i'm going to give this a class name of flex and flex wrap and then items that center and justify start so that now they're going to be styled as follows and then let's go ahead and style out the anchor tags so I'll give this a class name and i'm going to say class name here is going to be bg neutral dash 900 um that may be a problem because when i hover over this then this is also 900 so let me say let me reduce the hover on the article so on hover this should be 950 so that when i hover over it it's a bit lighter and we can still see the background on the anchor tags so inside here bg neutral 900 and then on hover then the bg neutral 800 and then add a transition and then give it a padding y of three and then let me say padding y of two padding x four and then rounded dash large save that and then we have that and then let's give it a gap on the ul so give it a gap of four which is going to separate out like so uh let's say gap of six there we go so we have a gap of six and then on the h3 let's have a margin bottom of four to push it downwards just a bit right did it oh sorry we need to remove one there we go fantastic and would you look at that so we have the books and probably i should increase this spacing a bit i think it's a bit too small so the spacing is right here so let me say that for large screens then the gap should be eight just to increase it massively yeah i think let's let's work with that so would you look at that now let's add our title on top before we finish this project so an h1 here is going to say and let me remove this console log as well so the h1 here should say params dot um what am i thinking about it's not params it should be it should be coming from the api somewhere let me just check it should be it should be this one and uh, not not even the list name it should be the display name the display name so we need to go into results and results is is an object so we don't need to map over it so the books dot results dot display name that should be the one so books dot results dot display display underscore name and then let's go back into our original page so that we can copy classes of the h1 so that we don't have to type all that again so copy and then paste them inside here save that and we should have our there we go there we go so if i go back if i go into a random category here then we should see espionage and there we go so we get books about that fantastic now Something that I did not do is that I didn't add a back button. So let's add a back button here just to improve the user experience. So right on top, I'm going to add a link here from next link. 
and I'm going to say uh, ampersand L A R R so left arrow and then say go back and then this link is going to be linking to the forward slash page because that is our home page so go back and then save that and it should appear somewhere there so go back and then I, the, one, the way I want to style this is just like the way I've styled the anchor tags. So let me copy this so that we don't have to type it again. So paste it inside here. Save that. And we should have our anchor tag right there. So go back. It goes back to the original page. And then before we finish, I want to go ahead and change this title. And then I want to format the dates. So let's change the title first. So inside our layout, I'm going to go ahead and change the title to book finder app using next js 14 the ny times api and tailwind css and then copy this and paste it inside for the description as well and that is going to update the title and then now for the dates what we're going to do is we're going to install a package that is called date fns so npm install date dash fns and then as that installs what we need to do is inside our home page, we need to go ahead and import import format from date dash fns forward slash format. And then the way we use it is inside our dates right here. I'm going to cut this out. And then I'm going to say format and then pass in new date. And then inside the new date, I'm going to pass in the date that I want to be formatted. And then outside of the first bracket, I'm going to place a comma and then a string here and say I'm going to format it in the form of D D O and then space and then month capital M four times and then year small y like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So format and then new date, pass in the date and then format in the form of D O month and then year. Save that and then we should this should be formatted like so fantastic would you look at that looking nice quite a nice application so if i click on this one then it takes us into the internal page about the books fantastic so let's go ahead and commit this to github and then i think i also want to deploy this to vercel i think i will do that so let's open up github and then let's also open up vercel close this close this close this and we can close this one as well so inside the repositories let's create a new repository so new repository come on loading please okay loading 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 So let me create a new repository here. Let me call it next.js books finder. And then, or, or rather, let me call it book finder instead of books finder. Then create repository. And then creating, creating. Let's copy this link. Let's go back inside here. Let me zoom out. And then let me shut down the server. We don't have any errors. That's always good. Now, let me go ahead and do this. Let's say git add package star git commit and I'm going to say install date dash fns and then git add dot prettier rc git commit dash m prettier config for tailwind css and then git add next dot config dot mjs git commit dash m and I'm going to say, what did we change? We, we added Google APIs. So add path name to allow images. And then let's cd into our app folder. And then let me say git add layout.js, git commit update title and description. And then git add page.js, git commit. And I'm going to say, show book categories on home page then git add books and git commit i'm going to say dynamic route for books and then git remote add origin 
and then paste in the link that we copied and then git branch dash capital m main to change it to the main branch and then git push dash u origin main which is going to push it to github and as that is pushing let's log into Vercel. okay i'm already i'm already logged in so let's say add new here and then add new project and then inside here it should now appear as the first one so import this project and then as it is importing let it import we can reload this so that we see that we have our project right there fantastic and then next yes books finder let me call it tsb sankara so that i remember how it is called and then we don't have also we have env variables we have an environment variable so what you need to do is just simply go ahead and copy this and then paste it inside here just paste it in the first uh what's it called in the first input and it is automatically going to format it for you as you can see right there so we need the env variables otherwise our application is going to break and in this build settings we don't need to change anything inside there so let's go ahead and say deploy and then let's wait for a moment as that is deploying and there we go so our application is now deployed so we can say continue to dashboard and then we can visit it from right here so visit and there we go so there is our application on the internet that i can share out with my friends so you can go ahead and test it out just to make sure that you don't have any bugs and you can see that it is working correctly and it looks quite quite nice if i do say so myself so that is going to be the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already it really helps me out and my new target is to reach 10,000 subscribers hopefully by the end of this year i hope that you can help me out on this journey and i will see you in the next one